Bo Hudson back with you today. I have another wonderful guest. We're going to be talking about happiness today and several other topics. Let's welcome her to the show. It's Jennifer Hughes, coach in your pocket. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, thanks for having me, Bo. I appreciate that. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, why you're called the coach in your pocket and how did you get that name and what do you do? Yeah, so I am a life coach and I um, I just kind of, um, okay, I just decided um, if I go back to the beginning, like I, I was struggling with a depression and I kind of figured out how to come out of it um, by studying and reading and experimenting. And, um, and I was like, so many people are struggling with unhappiness. They're unhappy, they're depressed, they're, they have anxiety. And so I, I kind of felt like this is what I need to do. I need to help them. I know the mm. way out and I need to help them out. Oh, wow. What is, how, let me just stop you and say, what was your way out? So, and that's what my, you're going to tell us about though, right? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I have basically what I learned is here's the things that no matter what happens, like they make you more happy or here's the things that make you more unhappy. I kind of learned those things. And, and for, for me, when I got started in the depression, I, I started to think like, you know, something happened. There was a situation and, you know, I kind of felt like, oh, somebody betrayed me. And I started to tell myself the story in my head over and over, like, oh, they don't like me. That means, you know, I would tell myself what it meant about me. That means I'm not worthy. That means I'm not good enough. That means, you know, nobody likes me. All these kinds of things. And I would just kind of repeat them in my head over and over again. Yeah, and that's what we do. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And I finally just learned. Like, what if I try a different story? What if I try? And it was like an addiction. It was like self-destructive, but very hard to stop. And I had to force myself to redirect my brain to think something more like about what I'm grateful for, about the truths that I knew about me. No matter what happens, I know this is true about me. And it was that I'm a person with value and with worth and nothing anybody says, thinks or does can take away from that. And I started to tell that story in my head. Anytime I would notice myself telling myself the depression story about why I should feel this way, I, I told myself, here's what I know about me instead. Were you so getting I, counseling at that time? Did somebody tell you how to do that or did you just figure that out? I I combined that with several books. There, there were several books that I read that kind of talked about that. And so mm -hmm. I kind of created my own little um, thing that I would look in my eyes and tell myself every day mm -hmm. um, that, and I would just, I just started to listen to myself, yeah. you know, I just, I started to believe myself. <laughs> so that goes back to the coach in your pocket, just because I was like, I want to help people with this. And, um, and so the, the books that I wrote, uh, the, the one that I have finished right now is um, it's a small little bullet point principle. It's mm -hmm. like, there's no story. There's, it's not long. It's very, very short. You can just read that point and try it right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I just figured that's kind of like the coach in your pocket, kind of like an angel on your shoulder mm -hmm. that tells you, yes, do that. No, don't do that. It's kind of like the coach in your pocket who helps you make wiser choices about how to choose happy in your life. What is the name of that book? It is called choose happy, <laughs> be this, not that. And um, I am working on getting it sent into Amazon, but right now it is just on my, um, on my website. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I know we're going to give the link after. Uh, just we're do done it here. now. Why not do it? Okay. Now. Okay. <laughs> it's at products.thecoachinyourpocket.com. Okay. Great. So that's where you can get that book. Choose happy, be this, not that. And that's kind of what it is. It's be this, not that be happy, not yeah. unhappy. <laughs> Now you said this, um, this started for you after a betrayal in a relationship, which I think everybody who's ever been in a relationship at one time or another has felt. And it's, it's just so hard to get yourself out of that. If someone yeah. breaks your heart or lies or does something terrible to you. And I think it's, um, especially women, I might be wrong, but we take it personally, you know, mm -hmm. especially yeah. the not good enough. I didn't do the right thing. Uh, what did I do wrong? Those sorts of things. Yeah. Instead of just, you know, blaming the other person or saying, you know, they, they are the ones that, that did it, not me. Mm -hmm. So um, it's so hard to turn that around. 
So gosh, I just applaud you for being able to do that. Thank you. What are some of those points that helped you and that you put in your book? So it is the first one you just kind of said um, that, uh, well, there's two different principles you just kind of brought up. And one is to take it personally. And um, the other one is to blame. And um, let me tell you where blame exists, misery persists. Either way, whether you blame yourself or them, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And because... uh, don't take it personally. Uh, that's one yeah. of the, that's the number one tenant of, um, what's his name? Ruiz. I forget his name. Michael Before. Ruiz. Yes. Yeah. yes. And I try to remember that. It's hard to remember. It is hard to remember. It's so easy. We want to take things personally, almost. It, well, but and it's, it's better if you don't. It is better if you don't. And one of the, one of the ways that you can kind of have it both ways <laughs> is to, um, to take it and just say, if I were the only person who was responsible for this, if I was a hundred percent responsible for this situation, which oftentimes we aren't right. Mm-hmm. I mean, the traffic, the, you know, what somebody does to somebody else. But if you just ask yourself, if I was the only person on the earth who had any power to fix this, what mm-hmm. could I do? Mm-hmm. And it gives you so much more power instead of like, that's like taking it personally in a positive way. Like if I was the only one who could fix this, what could I do? Mm -hmm. And you can be very innovative and it's very empowering. Even if you're like, well, I mean, I guess I did contribute to it in this way. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's how you know what caused it. Then you can know how to prevent it and how to get out of it. What was your, what was your answer for, for that? I had had a sign on my wall for years that said happiness is a choice. And when I was just so unhappy, I just, and my husband said to me, I can't do this another year. And I was just like, wow, you can't do this another year. I was outraged. I was incensed. I was like, how dare you say that to me? Right. And then I thought about it over and over again. And I just thought, can I do this another year? Do I want to be in the same place that I'm at? in a year from now. Right. And I just said, no, I cannot do this another year. I I came to that same conclusion. Mm -hmm. And that's when I just got to work. I just read, I studied, I experimented, I tried everything. And, you know, I mean, I even just did things that everybody knows. I went out into the sun, let the, the feel the sun on my face, you know, and Mm -hmm. listen to the birds sing and uh, that kind of thing. Like Mm -hmm. I I just started to do all the things that that you hear help. (laughs) And it did. It did help. And it, that's when I knew it was true. Happiness is a choice. Yes. Yeah, because I chose it. In those situations, sometimes you have to completely change everything. Yes. Um, and, and it's really hard. It is. You, know, really you, re- hard. you reach a point uh, when you're depressed or sad or whatever, where you go, I just don't want to do this anymore. And that's yeah. probably what you say. Then you make a different choice. Mm-hmm. and in in wow. happiness so tell us a little bit about how do you choose what do you say to yourself to choose happiness yeah it's kind of just about knowing um I mean because we're still gonna have situations we're still gonna have loss in our life we're still gonna have relationships that are difficult there's still gonna be things that we're gonna maybe want to choose to not be happy about right if you have a loss you're not gonna be like well I need to choose happy you're you need to go through that process of mourning right mm-hmm. but you want to kind of um ask yourself it and it's kind of like what we said if you take 100% responsibility instead of blaming somebody you're just more empowered you're more able to find the solution and you're going to be more happy even if the situation isn't what you wanted to have happen right mm-hmm. so you just empower yourself through choice and it's through how you think about it instead of that prison in my mind i i turned it into you know the um just what would free me, you know, I, I liberated myself from that prison mentality. And um, so it's just kind of knowing those, those things. Like if I, um, here's one, it, here's a principle from the book, I worry yeah. about what will happen. Okay. You can either worry about what will happen or you can make things happen. Mm, right. Okay. And so you can see how, if you're making things happen, you know, you're achieving your goals, you're, you're problem solving, you're facing challenges and overcoming them. Or if you're worrying about what will happen, you're sitting there waiting and like, oh, what's going to happen? You're scared, you're worried, you're stressed out and anxious. You can see how you'd be more happy with one than the other, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's just, they're all like simple 
you know, like common sense things like that, that if you do the one, you'll be more happy, no matter what's happening around you. And if you do the other, you'll be less happy. Right. And they're all like that, you know? So what are some of the chapters in your book? So, uh, or bullet focus. points or whatever it is that you have. Yeah, I have, um, I actually have 30 principles in, mm. in this book and mm -hmm. I have a PDF of it, um, that, um, I, I can find the link for, okay. <laughs> and we can give to your listeners of okay. all 30 of them in a table side by side of be this, not that. And you can see them like both side by side because mm -hmm. they're all opposing principles. Like one is like you execute instead of make excuses. Right. And you can see how, how that would make you more happy or less happy. Right. So they're all just kind of like that, like be an in instructive thinker instead of a destructive thinker. <laughs> so those kinds of things, they just, it just cannot help, but make you more happy, whatever's happening in your life. So have you, you know? always been interested in these kinds of things like uh, Deepak Chopra or, you know, the meditation people, um, or is this just something that happened to you recently when you wrote this book? Yeah, I, um, I would say when I was 18, I, um, I went to college and I, um, I learned this thing called transitional character where mm. you like, look at all the generations and you see like one person breaks the chain and they, they take that new generation in a different direction. And I decided at 18 and I'm going to be that one. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to take everything I've learned and I'm going to, I'm going to like not repeat the same mistakes and I'm going to go forward and do something new. And I feel like, you know, now that my, uh, my oldest child is 20, 29 years old, wow. you know, I feel like now I can know I did that. <laughs> I accomplished that because yeah. I can see where my generation has, has yeah. go gone to. And so I, I started being interested in it then and I studied lots of parenting classes and different things like that through the years. And then I, um, but I, I really got into this starting in kind of 2017, mm -hmm. like well after the depression where I'm like, okay, that stuff worked. <laughs> so I started to, to get more interested in it and, um, and to just, just see everywhere. Yeah. It's, I don't know, it's kind of been a process, but I also remember as a child that I would kind of, um, I'm going to tell you an embarrassing story. <laughs> Okay. Go ahead. I would, I would, uh, I would get yelled at or something. And I would just, I would not know what to do with all that emotion. And I would bite my arm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I would go in my room. I wasn't allowed to like vocalize right? that I was unhappy. And I would like just bite my arm as hard as I could. Yeah. And, uh, I, I just was like, there's gotta be a better way. Like I, I'm the only one in here suffering and I'm the only one who even knows about it. And so this is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> And that, um, that must be something that happens with cutters or people who hurt themselves because they don't know how to deal with the emotion that they're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, this, it's as close as I came. Um, mm -hmm. And then there was another um, situation as a child where like my mom sent me into my room and um, you know, you can't come out till you're happy. And um, well, I think she was, I was waiting for her to, to tell me when I could come out. Mm -hmm. And it was like hours later, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I come out, I'm like, can I come out yet? And she's like, are you happy? I'm like, yeah, I'm happy. She's like, well, then you can come out. And wow. like, I was like, I was in there forever. You forgot about me. And she's like, all you had to do was be happy. And then you could come out. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, so what? she kind of planted that seed that you can all of a sudden make yourself happy a little bit because I started to, I started to go into my room and be like, okay, I got to solve this. Cause then I can get out of here quick. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, I wonder if making yourself happy is bringing something to yourself or letting go of, of the anger and the sadness. Oh, and I love uh, that. maybe it's kind of both. I mean, cause you, maybe you can't have both in the same space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I love being that. Happy and being miserable. So maybe you let, maybe it isn't so much you make yourself happy, but you let go of the misery and decide to do something different. I don't know. That's very profound. I'm so glad you said that. It is totally both, but I, I think it's a lot more of letting go. And you sometimes have to do that every day, like every morning. Every day. You absolutely. sometimes wake up in a bad mood, you're unhappy. And uh, certainly the gratitude, what you said. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's it's just enormous how life changes if you feel the gratitude about how lucky you are, the things you have. That's absolutely true because it's scientifically proven that you cannot feel 
gratitude at the same time you're feeling negative emotions. So like when I would, when I'd be so depressed, I would literally change what I was thinking about. Like, nope, I'm not going to think that I'm going to think this. Yes. yes. And it made me happy instead of unhappy. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, my daughter and I, this is funny. You just made me think about this. There's a movie about James Brown. What's it called? Get on up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, James Brown, of course, had a terrible life, you know, just, you know, terrible childhood in prison and everything. And he would say, I got to change this. Yeah. Things would be bad. And he'd look in the camera as James Brown and go, I got to, I got to change this. Mm -hmm. And he, and he would. And yeah. it's almost like, and that was for survival for him. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's for survival for all of us. Yeah. I had to change it somehow. That's absolutely true. I love it. That I love that because it really is. You have to just decide what do I actually want? Here, here's another example of one of the principles. Do you want to be right? Or do you want to be happy? Yep. Because if you want to be more happy, being right is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. um, and you can see how that can work. Like in you know, people are so your brain wants to be right you know, like about your depression, it, it wants to be right. So it'll prove you right. Yes. It wants to be right about that relationship, you know, or, or what you think they said, or what you think they meant or whatever, you just want to be right. And it sacrifices your relationships. If you insist on it, if you are, if you can allow others to think that they're right, it can, it can save your relationships yeah, and you might still cares, think that really? you're right. Yeah. yeah. But you can still think that you're right. Right. And you, they can still think that they're right. And mm -hmm. just by not arguing about it, mm -hmm. that's how you do it. <laughs> then you're both right. <laughs> so do you do private coaching? You're, you're the coach in the pocket. Is that because of your little book or do you also coach people? I do coach people and I do private coaching and I also have a group. Um, I have a small group that I lead and each week we talk about principles that will help you be more happy. And um, it, it's a kind of a discussion where they can bring up their questions and their situations in their life. And I can coach them through it and they can talk about, oh yeah, I, I've seen this in my life in, the, in these ways and kind of like have those epiphanies, you know? So, um, so yeah, I, I love my little group. <laughs> well, how do, how do people get involved with that? So, um, so on the page, it's on the same page actually as the, as the book products.thecoachinyourpocket.com. Okay, products dot there. the coach in your pocket dot com. So it's products dot products. Yes. The coach in your pocket dot com. Yes. Don't forget the. <laughs> okay. And um, and you'll just see it on there. It's called the Choose Happy Inner Circle. Okay. I'll and, put a link to that um in yes. the description page. Thank beneath. you. And um, what else do you want to leave us with today? I want you to know that. You have the power within yourself to choose happy. It doesn't matter what's happening on the outside of you. You are the one who can choose what's happening on the inside of you. You can change your state. You can change your brain. You're actually the boss of your brain and you can tell your brain what to do. And then your brain tells your body what to do. And by taking charge of your thoughts, you take charge of your emotions and then your results. You think better, you feel better, and you do better. Yeah, that's and you really, have the power. <laughs> th that's very deep thinking. Um, it it sounds simple, but it's it's almost like you know the secret. Mm -hmm. It's the secret controlling your thoughts, and it's maybe yeah. not controlling them as changing them. That's that's what I was asking yeah. you if you thought it was getting rid of negativity. Uh, or bringing in happiness, letting go of one and grabbing on to the other. I, I, I just love how, how that makes you think deeply because I think it's both. I mm -hmm. think you have, you, I mean, you can't be happy when, when you have negative feelings, it causes negative emotions, you know, or you, when you have negative thoughts, it causes negative emotions. You can't be happy at the same time that you have those negative emotions. Mm -hmm. So you have to let go of the negative and then you have to replace it with something. Or else, mm -hmm. you know, by human nature, it's going to, you're going to have more negative. So you, you bring in something positive. Um, well, why do you think that we, we all are our own worst enemy? You know, nobody can tell us things. We wouldn't let uh, someone else tell us the things that we, we tell us in our own heads, you know, the bad things that we, 
say to ourselves, you know, which keeps us in fear and unable to move forward. And, you know, those are the things that are so devastating for people, our our own thinking. Yeah, it's absolutely true. I think the reason is because we're all questioning if we have worth, we're all questioning if we're enough, if we're good enough, Mm -hmm. if we're wise enough or skinny Mm -hmm. enough or whatever. We're all always questioning that. And that's why we can have a scathing voice for ourselves and a kind voice for someone else. And um, I would just challenge the listeners here to just, just try picturing saying that to your five-year-old or try picturing saying it to your best friend or just, just try to say it to somebody besides you. And you would never speak like that. Mm-mm. I would never speak like that to anybody. Mm-mm. And, and, and most people on the planet would not. So just picture talking to somebody you love, mm-hmm. even somebody you don't like very much. You still wouldn't say those things. Right. <laughs> so yes. yeah, I would picture talking to somebody that you love because isn't that what we're supposed to do? We should love ourselves enough to that's not right. treat ourselves like that. There's only one person we go through our entire life with, and that's ourselves. Yes. So we better make peace with ourselves or at I least try that. to love ourselves. And oftentimes we didn't have good parents. A lot of us didn't have parents that made us feel good about ourselves and taught us how to love ourselves. Yeah. And what's interesting about like parents of earlier generations really like didn't study self-help. They didn't mm-hmm. study personal development. They're like, it's kind of a newer thing, right? So, mm-hmm. um, so we maybe have more tools and resources than they did, you know? Yeah. I mean, just the internet alone is a greater resource than they ever had access to, you know? Yes, you're so right. And and there we find, you know, the books and the videos and the, you know, the life coaches and stuff that can help us. And they didn't have that. So that's probably to be expected. <laughs> well, Jennifer, so. thank you so much for telling us about you and your your book and your website. Once again, it is um, thecoachinyourpocket.com. And then if you go there, then you can find the products, right? At products, product dot the coach in your pocket.com. Products with an S. Okay. And, and you type you... it in like that. You type in products okay. dot the coach in your pocket.com. That's, that's a second web address. Yeah. All right. And the name of your book is choose happy. Yes. All right. You can do there it. it is. I hope you'll have it on Amazon soon. So, I will. Um, we can put that link under there too. Yes. Okay. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for um, telling us about yourself today. And I wish you well. I wish thank all good so things much. for you. Thank you so much. It was great to talk to you today, Bo. And you had so many deep, profound uh, <laughs> thoughts. I love those. <laughs> well, I don't know where they came from. But thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.